Hello. So I'm back for another video. Uh, this time I've got the green screen working. So uh, you don't have to look at that ugly green background. Now you can look at what is behind me instead. Remarkable. Uh, it's it's not working as as well as I would like because I think my camera is rubbish quality. It's a very old camera. Uh, that I paid about thirty dollars for, so I'll be upgrading the camera soon enough. And hopefully, I can provide some better quality. All right, so we're back for another Mathematica tutorial. This is the fourth tutorial that I'm doing, and so we have just finished calculating a truth table, or constructing code to con to create a truth table. So you don't have to write it by hand. So if you're interested in that. Check out my tutorial number three on Mathematica. Alright, so without further ado, let's begin our next problem. So, this one, although it says optional challenge, I think it's fairly easy. Right, so let's see. Let's see what it says. Let A and B be the sets in the previous question. Okay, well, I'll just make up some new sets. Alright, so A equals... 4, minus 5, 9, 0, 1, 2, and 7. Alright, now this is an array, but um, you might like to think of it as a set. If you apply the union function to it, it will act like a set because it will remove duplicates. Okay, now B, let's make up a new set. Let's put uh, minus 1, 4, and 0 in it. Okay, now what do we want to do? Construct the Cartesian product M, A cross B. Alright, so now a Cartesian product is a, a set of pairs. Okay, so M equals... Now what I do is I take one element from A, one element from B, and I construct a pair. So if I did that with the first two elements of A and B, well I'd take 4, comma, minus 1, and that would be my first pair. Alright, so indexing is very useful to be able to do indexing in Mathematica. Uh, so I'll backspace and show you what the first element is. So, put double square brackets. So this says, take the first element of the array A. Okay, shift enter, and you can see it's 4. No surprise. Alright, what about the first element of the array B? Okay, it is minus 1. Very good. Okay, what if we change this to second one. Well, we get 4, 4, wouldn't we? Yep. Okay, now I can um, backspace, okay, and put in a comma, and I want to convert this into a pair. And now I have a pair. Let's see. Yep, the pair 4, 4. Right, so next, next we want to make this an arbitrary element of the array A. Okay, so that, let's just say the jth element of A and the kth element of B. Alright, so if I execute this now, it'll complain. Alright, so there's a problem. So that is because uh, J and K don't have specific values. Okay, so now I want to tabulate the so table, and then I want to tabulate over, what does the question ask? Alright, so J will go from the first element to the last element, but if I want to, I can just put length of A, and then close my square bracket. Alright, so I also want to do the same with K. 
k goes from 1 to the length of b. Okay, so this should be the Cartesian product. Alright, so I'm supposed to call this m. m equals this list of pairs. And then the question asks for us to display this as a matrix. Alright, so then I will just press enter, go to a new line, matrix form M and shift and enter and have a look. So now I have a matrix containing all of these pairs. Alright. Okay, next, uh, which is the last part, and this is incredibly useful. If you know or use LaTeX, so LaTeX is a document preparation uh, system which is great for typing up mathematics. Okay, so if you are writing an assignment in math, a math assignment or a thesis, then you want to use LaTeX. It's much, much better than uh, doing the same in Microsoft Word once you get the hang of it. All right, so uh, let's see. What do I do? I select this. So it's all in blue. I've selected it, left clicking and, and going over it with the mouse. Right now I'm going to right click on the blue and copy as, right, copy as, and then I select LaTeX. Copy as LaTeX. Okay, now if I go and paste it in a new cell, paste. Well, you get a bunch of code, right? What this code does is it, it is code for constructing a matrix in LaTeX, all right? So I have over here on my other screen, I have uh, a LaTeX file. I'll show you. All right, so this is WinShell. I use WinShell and MicTech. And I'll make it a little bigger so you can see. Okay, now I'll go under here where uh, I'm writing, and then I will just, um, I'll paste, paste the LaTeX that I have there. Alright, so now I need to, to tell LaTeX that this is mathematics, so I'll just, let's go double dollar sign, or, or M equals this. And then I'll put dollar sign, dollar sign, it goes pink. And I'll go down to the end of that array. Dollar sign, dollar sign again. All right, and next I'm going to press the PDF LaTeX button. All right, now I'm compiling this. Uh, let's see, it's, it's saying there's an error missing dollar sign somewhere. Oh yeah, I put the dollar sign too, too early. Okay, so it's got to go after the right bracket. All right, I'll do that again. Compile with the PDF LaTeX button. Okay, now no complaints. All right, and so I'll uh, open it up. So this is a, a folder. All right, so it ends up here. And I'll show you what's been produced. All right, so exactly, exactly what we we had there, but it's in a in a PDF document, so done with LaTeX. Okay, so that's that's very helpful because uh, typing out uh, the commands for doing this by hand, well, if your matrix is big, that that can be a big job. So, so Mathematica is very helpful in this uh, regard. Okay, so that's, let's close that and uh, let's continue and do the next problem. Okay. Where were we? Alright, so I'll open up a new cell and I'll comment that we are doing question number 12. Okay, so let's have a look. Use contour plot to plot this curve in the domain from minus 3 to 3. 
that says, um, well, that's really the Cartesian product of minus 3 to 3 by itself. Okay, so contour plot is a way to plot a curve. Um, yeah, so I'll just do it. Contour plot. Alright, and then I'll enter the equation. Alright, so 5 by x squared by y squared plus y cubed. And then I'll write equals equals 4x. I put equals equals because I'm not say I'm not putting this into memory as equal to. It's it's uh, more like more more like a logical question, right? So that's the way you enter it in in, in a plot if you're writing an equation to plot. All right, now x is to be plotted from minus three to three, and the same for y. Y is to be plotted from minus three to three. All right, now that we've got that written out, I press Shift Enter, and so you can have a look what we get. All right, so we get this. Now, uh, so this is a curve we've plotted, and we can see the plot range. So if you want to plot in a different plot range, let's just change the, the bounds of the plot. Minus 5 to 5, for example. And we get more of it. Okay. So let's have a think about what you can do with such plots while we're at it. Alright, so if I say A equals this object... A equals this, and then let's plot something else, B equals contour plot, let's, let's go for a circle, x squared plus y squared is 2, x between minus 3 and 3, and the same for y. Okay, shift enter. Well, it'll show me both of these. Alright, so now I'm going to put semicolons so that I don't show them just after I plot them. Now I will put them together in the same plot. So show a comma b. Alright, let's see. Now I've plotted the two curves in in one uh, plot. All right, but you see that circle now looks like an ellipse. All right, so why has that happened? Well, it's just the plot range, and so I can put in an option um, aspect ratio ratio um, automatic. Is that what I want? Okay, so if I change that, now now it's got um, a one-to-one -one ratio for for the circle. Now now it actually looks like a circle, all right. So yeah, so that's how to plot curves, all right. But if you want to do plot just a function, let's just plot plot a quadratic. So I'll choose the simplest one. So if you have something, a function to plot, then you just write plot. Alright, so if we're plotting uh, the y equals x squared plus 2x plus 3, alright, so I just write that in, x squared plus 2x plus 3, and then I enter a plot range for x. So x goes from, say, minus 4 to 4. Let's have a look. Alright, that comes out under here. Okay, so that's how to plot something really simple. Okay, now you can also do the same for a 3D plot. Um, I'll just turn this just turn this into a 3D plot by writing 3D. And now that's an uppercase D for the three-dimensional part. Okay, now I want some Ys in here, so I've got a, I'm going to plot a surface. All right, so let's just put in a Y. And I'll put here a y squared. Copy this. 
paste it, turn that into a Y and let's see what we get. Okay, that took a little longer but here is a surface and now you can grab this, hold down the left mouse button and you can have a look around. Right, so can we do that here? Not really, it doesn't really do anything there. But with three dimensional plots, you can have a look around, and that's helpful to get to know what you've plotted. Okay, so now uh, what if I wanted to, to plot a, a surface that's not necessarily a function? Okay, so you can just do contour plot 3D. Contour plot 3D, and now I want to plot a specific uh, surface. So I need equals equals. Let's choose choose uh, a number five. Okay, and let's have a look. Shift and enter. Well, some complaints. All right. So what have I done wrong? Yeah, I'd have to look in the help file. Alright, so well, let's just go look in the help file. Contour plot 3D. Okay, so I need to specify the Z value as well. So copy, paste, and I'll change that to a Z. Okay, and now we have, um, looks a bit like a cylinder. Alright, so that's how you plot uh, in Mathematica. Alright, so I'll sign off for now and I'll see you next time.